In today's video, I'm going to show you how to make a lit tailgate so you can let your light shine. Let's go ahead and get started with this video. God bless you and welcome to the channel. If you're new here, please click that subscribe button. So in today's video, we're going to be taking the C1500 and doing a custom John 14.6 tailgate that's going to be lit up with plexiglass. And about a year ago, I did the same thing on my EP3. And it said, John 316, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, and any that believe in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. And this one is going to say John 14, 6, which is, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. These are the words from Jesus, and it's super important to know. So I want to put it on my vehicle. When I go to car shows, car meets, and just when I'm driving around, people will see that message on the back. So I'm going to go ahead and get this pulled out a little bit, take the tailgate off. All right, so if you guys didn't know, these tailgates are actually really easy to remove. You look in here, this one has a rod. You lift it up, pull it through. Same thing on this side. And after that, you pull it up a little, and it just pulls right out. All right, so now that we got it off the truck, I went ahead and moved the truck out and shut the doors so you guys can hear me a little better. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and start measuring from this edge to this edge. And it says it's 64 inches from that edge to this edge. So we're trying to find the dead center of this thing. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and mark 32 inches, and that is gonna be the absolute center of this tailgate. So that way we have a good idea of where we're gonna be placing the John 14, six. So now we're gonna measure out 33 wide, because that's about how big I want it. I want it to fill up a lot of that tailgate space. And exactly half of 33 would be 16 and a half. So right at 16 and a half, we're still centered and can actually mark all of this so that we have some reference points here. So we've got some marks now. Now we need to see how big I want the lettering. So I would think so about six inches is how high the letters would be. So we've got a good little reference of where I want to place the John 14 6 and with this little small dent here I'm going to try to cut this out with everything else now I'll be using a Dremel I would like to have a water jet machine to cut it out but I don't have access to one of those the closest one's Dallas I believe and I don't even know the price but I'm sure it's more than I can afford so we're just going to be using some Dremel with cutoff wheels um, I'm going to go in to the house and we're going to go ahead and get the vinyl stencil cut and then we'll come back out place it on then we'll get to cutting all right so before we place the stencil down i want to wipe it down with some rubbing alcohol just so that it sticks well so i'm gonna go ahead and do that real quick all right since my vinyl machine wasn't able to do a 33 inch piece by six inch i had to do it in two separate pieces overlap them with the little plus sign that i had right here and then we got it to go. So now I'm just going to peel this off and place it. I'm going to go roughly here because exactly uh, half of right here is six and a half. So six and a half right here. And that's where it's going to be in the half. And we're going to try to get this right directly over that dent, which the four goes perfectly over it. Praise God. So we can cut that little imperfection out and then lay this on. And it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect since I'm just going to be cutting these out. So if there's wrinkles in it, it will be okay. All right, now that we've got the sticker laid out, I measured from the inside edge here to the edge of the six, and that's 13 and a half inches. And if we measure on this side, 13 and a half inches goes right to the outer edge of the J. So it's pretty centered and I think it looks pretty good. It also covered up that dent. So it worked out perfectly. So next thing I'm going to do is use a razor blade. 
and I'm going to trace around all the edges of all of these uh, just in case when I'm cutting with the cutoff wheel that this sticker is probably going to come off and I want to make sure I still have my lines just in case. But I'm going to do my best to cut the sticker out of there so that way the sticker still stays intact. So I'm going to go ahead and get a respirator on, safety glasses, get the Dremel out and get to working. But first I'm going to score it with this. All right, so I switched from a razor blade to a flathead and went around all of these, got it nice and scratched up. So that way, if the stickers come off, I'll still have my lines. I'm going to be using this. It's kind of experimental for me. I've never used one of these particular ones. This says it's 25 times longer life, and it was $20 just for one. So I really hope it does last longer because I could only afford the one. Now, I do have two of these sets and they come with 12 pieces each. I put all 12 pieces from the other one in this one. So there are 24 pieces in here. So I hope that this can get it all done. If not, I'm gonna have to wait till payday and then get more and finish it. But uh, we're gonna see how long this one here lasts. We're gonna start with this one and I'm gonna go as far as I can and then I'll show you how much I've got done. So these are quick release. They go right on the end. You just unscrew this piece, slide it on. Then you tighten it up and you're ready to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this on, get my safety goggles on and get started. Alright, so I was able to get the J done. It still has plenty of life left, so, so far so good. Uh, it's a little complicated on the curves, but I can smooth a lot of that out with the Dremel uh, carbide bit to kind of smooth everything. So, I definitely did it. I had to cut into the actual vinyl lettering, which I have to do often, um, but it's fine because this is just going to be empty. The frosted plexiglass will be behind it and it'll be lighting up red when I turn the park lights on or hit the brakes, it'll get brighter. So uh, yeah, it'll definitely work pretty good. This is a lot thicker metal than what I did on my RSX where I did the Legend of Zelda crest on the hood. So this stuff is definitely gonna take more bits to get through all of this, but this cutoff wheel is doing pretty good. Other ones probably would have broke by now. So I'd say it's definitely worth the $20, but I'm gonna try to get as much done with that one as I can so I can really get my money's worth. So I'm gonna go ahead and get back to it. All right, so there it is with all of it cut out. Now I need to go through and smooth it out using a file or a carbide bit. And these little pieces like this one will be going with the four, this one will be going with the six. Those will be getting glued to the plexiglass after they're cleaned up, of course. I didn't even use the entire thing. I did make a discovery though. So these ones here on the top that have the black and yellow, they don't last very long. But these black ones, they last a lot longer. So those are the ones you'd want to use if you're using these. Now, obviously, the cutoff wheel on the grinder saved me a lot of time on the straight parts. So I just use that um, for a lot of it. But yeah, definitely this piece right here, the one that was $20, is worth the money for sure. Um, it just, once it gets to the end of its life, it's not very sharp. So it takes longer to cut, but it does still cut. Um, so. I definitely recommend these ones for sure. And the $20 one, if you could buy like two or three of these, you'd be able to finish this whole thing up real quick. The hardest part with this one was the curves though. So once they get down to a smaller size, you can fit it in there better. But uh, yeah, 
I'm going to go ahead and get this all cleaned up a little bit more, flip it over, and then we'll be focusing on the back side so we can have access to putting the plexiglass and lights in there. All right, now that I got it flipped over, I need to make an access panel because this one does not have an access panel. So I'm going to be cutting out six to seven inches of area here and on this side. So that way I can slide the plexiglass in with the LED lights behind it. I was thinking for sure doing something larger over the whole surface area just to make it nice and flat. Uh, but either way, I'm going to go ahead and get these cut out and then we'll go from there. All right, now that I got these access panels cut out, I wanted to show you there's also something else in here. A wasp nest. Thankfully, it's an old one, not active. That would have been a bad day. So I was thinking after I clean up all these cuts, I need to get a welder because I don't have one still and weld in some nuts right here in each corner, drill holes in this, and then I can bolt the panel back in and then we can put the plating over the entire thing. Um, so that's an option for bolting those back in. It should work. And as for the rest of this, I just need to get all these cleaned up because my cuts are not perfectly straight in this area. And the plexiglass and the LED should be here tomorrow. So as soon as they get here, we'll finish this thing up. All right, so it's the next day. I went ahead and got the tailgate sanded and reprimed the entire thing and got any bare exposed metal covered. I also took all of the cutouts that I cut out for the John 14.6 and painted them red, and I'm actually gonna hang them up in the shop. So we're reusing as much from this project as possible. I also got the LEDs right here, which I'll link these ones in the description. They're super, super bright. So I'm actually gonna be using these for the park light and the brake light. So I got this piece from Ace, and these will fit right on there, and I'll be doubling it up. So I'll have one strand for the park lights and then on the other strand that'll be for the brake lights running all the way through what i'm going to do is cut through here just make a slit in here and this piece of metal will actually be removable so it'll have riv nuts on each side a bolt that i can remove and i can just pull this out to change the leds or mess with anything that i need to so i might be able to weld up the back side of the tailgate and still use it as a functional tailgate on the inside so that I won't need access to those panels. So we're still waiting for the plexiglass to get shipped, but I had an old piece of plexiglass I wanted to test out. So I went ahead and sanded this to where it's not see-through very easy. It's kind of a frosted look. And I painted it with MC200 Duplicolor. That is the part number, MC200, red anodized paint. and went over it, so it's like tint paint. And I'm gonna show you what it's basically gonna look like. So I'm gonna slide this up through here. All right, I went ahead and put the LED strip in there, and this is basically what it's going to look like. It's going to be brighter than that because I'm also going to be putting foil tape, that HVAC foil tape on the back side to kind of reflect the light more. And this would be like park light. When I hit the brakes, it would get even brighter than this. So this is basically what it's going to look like once it's all done. And these will be getting glued on and the double sided adhesive from the Velcro will be put in there so that way it can be removable and it'll be pretty straightforward. I mean, I'm just waiting on the plexiglass right now and then we can finish this up. So I'm gonna go ahead and get all of this area trimmed out so I can place this there and we'll have the light shining in directly from the bottom and I'll drill holes so we know right where the bolt holes will be and we'll get that done. Right after I got the cut made, I went ahead and vacuumed out any dust or debris that's on the inside there. 
got it nice and cleaned up. Used some silver metallic paint to brighten it up inside so that way the light reflects more. Ended up ultimately going with the HVAC foil tape. I really like that stuff. It works really well, adheres good, and it's really bright. I went ahead and laid out the LEDs on the metal strip to see how long I needed, cut them, and was able to do two strips of that, plus I added one more. The two strips would be for the brake light, and then the one single strip will be for park light, since I need it brighter, and put it all back together and got this foil tape around the bottom so no light leaks out of there and it's nice and sealed up but there's still holes for water to drain through and this right here is what it'll basically look like with the park light on and that's with the brake light activated park light brake light park light brake light you get the idea i am still missing the plexiglass they didn't make the delivery today i'm delayed another day so we'll pick the rest of this up tomorrow and get the rest of the plexiglass in and finish this project up. All right, so I ended up going to Home Depot to get some plexiglass because they pushed my shipping date out to April 17th. They just keep pushing it farther out, so I'm gonna cancel the item and get my money back. This one wasn't too expensive. Uh, went ahead and measured out seven inches, and then we were gonna do it by 33 inches, but this one's not a 33 inch piece, so I have to cut it in half. So I went ahead and just got this whole piece cut, and then I took it down to the foam mat on the ground and started sanding it with some 40 grit on one side, uh, making sure to peel that stuff off first. So on the glossy side, I went ahead and used some U-Pole adhesion promoter. Uh, then I painted it with the anodized red paint to make it see-through red. So the glossy side is facing up. I went ahead and got the Velcro adhesive. I'm using Velcro for now, but after it's finished painting, it's just going to be double-sided adhesive, so it won't be removable. Uh, but right now it just has the Velcro so I can remove it easier. And got the John 14.6 part in, got it all back together, and this is what it looks like. It looks really, really good. It's really bright, and it looks absolutely awesome. I'm super excited for this. And this is where we're at now. I went ahead and got a grommet from a hardware store, put it right there, got some heat shrink and soldered all of this. And I know that these are the brake lights and these are the park lights. So I'll hook them up to the truck side and get this reinstalled. But one thing I want to show you real quick. All right, so on the driver's side of the tailgate, we have a full circle. This part would be on the truck side. And that's how it goes in there like that. And if we go to the passenger side of the tailgate, there's a circle with half of it cut out. That's so this piece can slide in there like that. And it has a little access point. So what I did is I went to Pickers in Reno, Texas, tell them more motorsports garage sent you and you get 25% off your purchase. And I got one of these off of the driver's side of a C1500 and it's going to go in there and not allow it to be pulled out. The only way you're going to get this tailgate off is undoing these bolts and uh, thieves like quick, easy jobs. This one's not going to be a quick and easy job, so they'll move on. But I'm also going to be taking it one step further. I got a brand new handle that I'll be installing after I finish the paint on the truck and a new plastic trim. This plastic trim don't work right because this handle is actually bent. So when I replace this handle on here, I'll also be installing a lock. So this will have to be unlocked. Then they're going to have to get through all of that. So this tailgate will be a lot harder for them to steal. Not impossible, but it'll definitely take a lot of work. So they might just move on. They also make ones that go around this part. It's a little lock and I might put that on too. So I'd have three ways just to make sure they don't take off of this tailgate. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this installed on the truck, get it wired up to the factory uh, taillight, and then we'll see how it looks. All right. So getting the tailgate on was quite a task since I'm putting the other bucket on there that doesn't have a slit in it so it does need modified i had to go and cut off a little tab grind it smooth i went ahead and threw some primer on it so it don't rust and it still didn't want to go in very easy so i had to lift it at a really high angle and basically slam it down and hope i could get it to line up which i finally did get it to line up and it closes so good uh, now I have to shift my focus over to the wiring. So I drilled a hole into where the tail light goes and I primed it on both sides, put a grommet there and pushed the wires through. I had the help of my wife. So huge thanks to my wife for coming out, hitting the brake lights and hitting the park lights so I could test which pin did what. And I got it all figured out. It's right there on screen. If you're trying to do this to your C1500 or K1500, uh, it should be the same for other Silverados, but I'm not exactly sure, uh, but definitely works for this. 
and I got it all wired up, soldered up, and heat shrink, and put back in the loom. Got the tail light back in, and this here is what it looks like. It looks really good, very bright all the way through. And I'm gonna go ahead and start it up. So there it is, looks really good. I really like how it turned out. Definitely better than all the other ones I've done. But moving over to the inside of the tailgate, I just have some aluminum tape over those holes for right now. I will be welding these back in. Now I'm not a very good welder, but Vivor is sending me two welders since I don't have one. They're gonna send me a low budget option and then a little bit higher price one, and I'm gonna weld these in. I don't have much experience, so we'll see how good they work for inexperienced people. But I'm gonna weld those back in. Then we'll be bedlining the inside of the bed with this bully liner. They sent me this for a review, so I'm going to see how good it is. It says it's made from recycled tires, so that's pretty cool. It's environmentally friendly, and it doesn't have solvent base. It's a water base, so you can actually store it and use it again later, unlike Raptor, which you once you harden it, it's that's all you got. So we'll see how that does as well, but I will be doing the truck first on the outside, getting it all painted with the purple flake raptor liner so we'll see how that turns out and then we'll be doing the inside of the bed so huge thank you to bully liner for sending me that and i'm really excited to see how it does but there it is for the john 14.6 tailgate always remember there's only one name above every other name and there's only one way to the father and that's through jesus so repent be baptized in the name of the father the son and the holy ghost and receive the holy spirit as mentioned in acts 238 for the wages of sin is death but the free gift of eternal life is through Christ Jesus. He paid the price in full when he said it is finished on the cross. He meant that he has served your sentence. He will take your unrighteousness and cover it with his righteous robe. And he will take your sin and put it on himself. He died an innocent man and rose again by the power of God. And that same power that rose Jesus from the grave can be yours today. Believe the gospel. Repent. Be baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And you will have life eternal. Trust in the finished work that Christ did on the cross for us. But I'm going to go ahead and get off here. I pray this message reaches who it was intended to. And if that's you, praise God. I'm going to go ahead and leave my outro, and here it is. I just want to let you know the gospel, which means good news. And the good news is we don't have to live this way no more. Who the sun sets free is free indeed. Jesus died and rose again, conquering death for you and I. When he went to the cross, he was thinking of you. No matter what you've done, you're only one step away from the cross. So all you have to do is repent. Believe in your heart, confess with your mouth that Jesus rose from the dead, and you will be saved. And I just pray that this message reaches the right person, because I don't know who this message is for. But I just put it at the end of my video and pray that it goes to the right person. So, God loves you, He's calling you, and He even wrote a love letter to you. Click the Bible link in the description, it's totally free. I get nothing from it other than the fact that you can make it to heaven. And it's not of your good works, it's not of mine. We are only saved through one name above every name, and that name is Jesus. And in the native tongue, it would be Yeshua. And if you want to go all the way back, Elohim, the creator of all. Jesus is calling you. He loves you, and he died for you. That's how serious it is. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of eternal life is through Christ Jesus. All you have to do is accept the gift. If I was to give you the keys to my truck, you couldn't have them unless you took them. Well, the same thing for heaven. Jesus is providing a way out. Everyone is on their way to hell right now, on this one path to destruction, and he's providing the way out. It's that simple. God loves you so much. And I pray this message reaches the person it's intended for. Jesus does love you. And if you prayed for a sign, this is it. So I'm going to go ahead and get off here, but I just wanted to let you know this. Jesus does love you. God bless. Stay safe. Stay awesome. Jesus loves you.